Hello e-skaters, welcome back to a brand new video. Today's video is going to be about our latest build, which is this monster of a board. Today we're going to be teaching you guys how to build it. It is actually more of a combination between our first video's board and our last video. Um, so hub motor board, we combined many of the components to create one epic board, and today we're going to be teaching you guys how we made it. Like I said at the beginning of the video, many of the components that we are using are from previous builds. The majority of the mechanical components come from our very first video's board, which was a 12S mono drive build. So the deck is the bottlenose top mount deck, the trucks are the torque boards, 218mm trucks, and the wheels are 83mm flywheel clones that are sky blue. The motor mount we are using is a little bit of a new one. It is an inertion style motor mount from Miami Electric Board. It has two clamps that clamp together using some cap head screws and then a carbon fiber plate to adjust tension. The motor pulley is a 15 tooth motor pulley from Torque Boards. The belt is a 265 millimeter HTD5 belt. It's pretty standard. And then the wheel pulley is a 36 tooth ABEC wheel pulley from Torque Boards. It is steel and it's a pretty standard wheel pulley as well. This build will be using two of Torqueboard's massive 6374 190 kV motors. They have a maximum power output of 3150 watts and they're massive and will be excellent for this purpose. The first step to do is to mount the motor to the motor mount using M4 bolts. We used a 63mm motor and it works no problem with this motor mount. You could also use a 50mm motor. You can attach them to the motor mount using an Allen key wrench. Once the motor is mounted to the motor mount, you can mount the motor mount on the trucks by simply sliding it over the hanger. Make sure it's a caliber style truck just like we're using. And then you can tighten the motor mount to the trucks using the cap head screws on the back and just tightening them with an Allen wrench. Make sure you use Loctite because they will come loose from the vibrations on the road if you do not and then your motor mount will fall off and that would be disastrous. You're going to then need to do this process on the other side as you are using a dual motor system in this and then you can move on to the drivetrain which you will start by putting a keyway into the shaft then sliding the motor pulley over. Once you've done this you can slide the belt over the axle and over the motor pulley so that it's nice and loose. You can then slide the wheel onto the axle of the truck and then rotate the wheel until the two pulleys align and then the belt is fit snug over both of them. You may of course need to adjust your belt tension based on the position of the motor mount which can be done using the three screws on the back of the motor mount and adjusting the plate. It's important to have the right tension otherwise your belt could slip or snap from being too tight so just make sure it has a little bit of give like shown here in the video. We then did the exact same process to the other side of the truck so that the two motors were set up and it was a dual drive which was symmetrical on both sides. Now moving on to the electronics, which are identical to that of the hub motor build. We are literally just taking the footage from that video and putting it in this one. So starting with the ESC, which is a Flipsky Dual 6.6 .6 VESC with 200 amps current. This thing is a monster and it works very well. Um, no complaints about it so far. Then the battery is a 12S 3P stealth pack using 30Q cells for a 45 amp continuous discharge rate. This pack has a massive amount of capacity and it will take you for long rides. The 12S voltage also gives a lot of speed and this will be connected to the 12S BMS box from Miami Electric Boards. It comes with a power switch, a charge port, and you simply connect the balance cables to the batteries cables and then you connect the two XD60s together. You can then power it on using the switch and it should light up the LCD indicator. It works very well and it's a complete system. You can then connect the BMS to the VESC using the XT60 connector. The enclosure we are using comes from Amazon and it comes as a set of two for only $35. It seems great, it's really professional looking, and the first thing we did was drill holes in the side for the charge port and the power switch. We then put each in their respective holes so that it looked nice and flush on the edges of the enclosure. The next thing we did was to make a hole for the LCD percentage indicator, which as usual was a struggle for us as we do not have a working Dremel. We traced the outline of this LCD sized piece of paper and then used a box cutter to trace it and then used a bunch of drills and repeatedly made a square around it and then cut it out with a box cutter.
Before fitting all the electronics in, we decided we needed to take the casing off of the BMS, as it was much too thick to fit in the enclosure. The actual BMS itself is much thinner than the 3D printed case that ships from it from a Miami Electric Boards. As you can see here, it's almost twice as thick, and we didn't really need that. We then applied Velcro to all of the components inside of the board. This way they would be mounted inside of the board when it's on the bottom of the deck. And after this we proceeded to find the best way to fit all of the electronics inside of the enclosure which proved to be very difficult as it is a very tight space in there. We used hot glue to mount the BMS on top of the battery pack as the enclosure was actually thick enough to house both and it wasn't long enough to house them all flat on their own. We then cut part of a mat to provide a seal between the deck and the enclosure that will hopefully dampen the rattling and provide some sort of weather seal. Obviously the footage that we just used is from our hub motor board so you might be confused as to why there's black wheels and hub motors in a different deck. These electronics were wired in the way that we showed in this video, but they were then connected to the dual 6374 motors shown above in this picture. So it turned out to be that electronic system mounted on to the mechanical system that we just showed you guys how to build. We mounted the trucks and enclosure to the deck and added three 1 8 inch riser pads to the deck to provide a little bit more smoothness on the ride and provide the motor with some more clearance to the deck. This is what the finished project looked like. Now for the part of the video that everyone's probably been waiting for, the specs. So first we're going to talk about the maximum speed and according to this calculator, our top speed should be 33.25 miles per hour unweighted and around 28 miles per hour with someone on it. Next, the range can be estimated to be about 18 miles and this is using 22 watt hours per mile which is pretty aggressive riding. So you can get more theoretically. The board is charged using a 12S 3 amp charger and takes about 3 hours to charge. In terms of the physical size, the skateboard is 40 inches long, just as the deck is, and here is it compared to our most popular build, which is the 10S Evolve build, and it's much smaller as you can see. In terms of the weight, this board weighs in at 23 pounds. This is a decent weight for an e-skate, and it's not pleasant to carry around, but it's still manageable. Thank you everyone so much for watching this video. If you've made it this far, please consider liking our video and subscribing if you haven't already. Your support means a lot to us and knowing that you've subscribed to us will really help us have some feedback to know what we're doing is of interest to people. Like I said, thanks for watching the video and enjoy the rest of the writing footage.